Well, I thought today was going to be more about the Lonzo Ball talk and about the power rankings today, but we got a huge breaking story about a certain player. His name is Eric Bledsoe, and let's just jump right into it. Here we go, guys. Curry with the fake on Jalen Brown. Drills! Chance to be around if you realize he is. All right, guys, welcome back to the charge where we just always take charge in the latest breaking news and rumors surrounding the NBA. And let's just start off with it. We need to discuss it right away, and that is the Eric Bledsoe dilemma. So if you guys don't know, Eric Bledsoe tweeted out, I believe last night, if I'm not mistaken, he tweeted out that he didn't want to be here. And of course, everyone was speculating that, of course, he doesn't want to be here because, um, you know, the Suns aren't a very good team. And, you know, they're 0-3 right now. They just fired their coach, Earl Watson, which I remember playing here. Uh, this is probably give my location, but he was playing for the Supersonics, so I remember him very well, and I thought he was a decent player when he played in the league, but as a coach, it just hasn't worked out, and whether or not you agree that he's a good coach or a bad coach is up to you, but obviously, I think the, the, the crappy thing is, and we'll just talk about the Earl Watson thing right quick, because it's just the fact that if you know this guy wasn't going to be the dude, like if he wasn't going to be your head coach going into the season, why did you keep him on? through training camp, implementing his own uh, his offense into the team and his defensive philosophies. If you know that your guy, if you don't want this guy at all, then just fire them right away. It makes no sense to me why you have to hire or keep guys on just because you want to not lose money. I mean, I'd rather lose money and get a coach that will actually you want to build towards the future, but obviously the Suns are probably a probably one of the worst run organized franchise in the NBA right now. It's looking pretty bad for them. And, I mean, you could tell, by the way, they just draft point guards year after year. Let's just quickly, let me look it up here. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting, and they had to hire a new one. And let's just go to the last couple years here. So, we'll start off in... Well, we'll basically, we'll start off here in 2014. So, obviously, in 2014, they took Tyler Ennis, a point guard. Next year, in 2015, they took Devin Booker, who's a shooting guard, of course, you know, a guard player. They, they're taking a lot of guards. Again, in the 2016, they didn't take a guard, but they just have a lot of these guards. So, like, in 2016, they took another guard, and they took another guard in Devin Reed this year, in 2017. So, by their draft history and their record, they show that all they want to do is just draft these point guards. I mean, in 2012, they drafted Kendall Marshall, you know, the guy with a little bit of a funky shot. It just shows you that they don't know what they're doing because obviously they're they obviously are like oh you know Steph Curry's a point guard oh Derrick Rose is a point guard or oh you know all these point guards are leading teams to the playoffs we need to get one and it just doesn't work like that guys you need I don't know what their draft is go, or is like or what they're doing with the draft but they need to figure something out because this is definitely not working for them uh, Eric Bledsoe obviously not a good coach. All these guys that they brought in aren't good coaches, and it's going to take another young, patient coach and a roster filled with a complete team to get this team over. And I wouldn't be surprised if everybody on that roster wants to ask for a trade trade uh, demand because if I'm Devin Booker, I want to trade demand to a better team because this is obviously not working out for me here in the Phoenix, and I don't want to be here, just like Eric Bledsoe. But let's just jump right into the Eric Bledsoe story after I just talked about the Earl Watson thing, and that is... Eric Bledsoe said he didn't want to be here. The general manager himself came out and said that, you know, that's the explanation that they got from uh, Eric Bledsoe was that he was at a hair salon with his girlfriend. He didn't want to be there, and that's why he tweeted it out. But uh, the, the GM basically said, we don't believe it at all. And basically that he's going to be nowhere in their plans anymore. They're going to trade him immediately. They don't want him there anymore. So, uh there's also rumors that the Knicks are interested in Eric Bledsoe, which would be very interesting. I don't know what they would have to give up or what they'd have to trade. Uh, they also thought about the Denver Nuggets are also looking to trade. Um, it says here that the Phoenix Suns have asked about Frank Nitlikina and Willie Hernan, Hernan Gomez. And that's according to one of the ESPN insiders from New York, Ian Begley. So, in my opinion, is that a good trade for New York? 
I would say it's a good trade in the sense, but a lot of people are saying that Frank Nilakina could be something, but it all depends on what you're trying to mortgage for the Knicks. I think with the Knicks standpoint is that they shouldn't trade at all because this team is basically garbage and they need to start refresh and rebuild again. And I think you do have that with uh Kristaps, Frenny Lakina, I mean, especially with Porzingis. I mean, Porzingis is like your main guy and he needs to be the centerfold of everything. You need to build a team around him. I don't know what let me just quickly look at his uh contract real quick. I want to look at Eric Bledsoe's contract just to see how many years he has left and if he's able to do anything. So I mean, yeah, basically he's stuck for the next two years in Phoenix, so we can't really do anything. So uh, it sucks for him because I think right now would have been the perfect time to uh, be a free agent and demand to go somewhere else. But it all depends on how the Phoenix Suns are going to look at this and if the owner and GM is very spiteful because Eric Bledsoe said said such an egregious thing and lied to them about not being uh, here for the... They just, they just, he doesn't want to be here for the Phoenix Suns team. So if that's the case, if I'm the GM, or at least you know we've seen it with the Pacers GM, is that he traded Paul George to a team he didn't really want to go to. Uh, so far, I think it's been okay with the Thunder, but right now we're focusing on the Phoenix Suns. And I would think that I'm hoping that the GMs and Eric Bledsoe can come to kind of a mutual understanding and a mutual agreement that we I want to go to a team that's for a winner and I also want to go for a team that we can get the most draft picks out of and I think Cleveland might be in the running just because they have that first round pick from Brooklyn now and whether or not they decide to trade that or not is up to them uh depends on if LeBron stays or not because if he doesn't stay then there's no point in trading that and just keeping the pick and not get Eric Bledsoe who will only be there for two years and you already have Isaiah Thomas unless I mean Eric Bledsoe could obviously play the shooting guard but I would I would think that Eric Bledsoe is more of a point guard. I think he's his game is a little bit different than others. More of a scoring first point guard. But, yeah, I mean, this is just a complete uh, disaster. Everyone on Twitter is just roasting Eric Bledsoe right now. I mean, whether or not he's uh, at the hair salon or not is a is a debate in itself. But we just got to figure out what's going on here, guys. And, basically, that's pretty much it for just the Phoenix Suns. And it's kind of interesting that the Phoenix Suns are going to be the first team that are going through this kind of crazy uh, trade rumor phase and players want out. Because, you know, the Phoenix Suns, you know, they when they had Steve Kerr there being a GM and D'Antoni as the coach, you know, in 20, and 2007, team was great. Team was looking good. They had Steve Nash and everybody else. But it just, when you don't capitalize on those uh, wins and you don't go to the NBA Western Conference Finals or even the NBA Finals, those teams are merely forgotten. Although, you know, being a basketball aficionado, you still remember those uh, great Phoenix on offense teams with Amari Stoudemire as well before the knees went out and he went to New York. It was it was still a great team to watch, and it kind of sucks that this is now the Phoenix Suns here where they draft point guard after point guard without any success because they're I don't know what their scouts are looking at. Uh, the only great thing that they had about them was that they actually brought out uh, Devin Booker. Devin Booker is probably their best pick so far, in my opinion. I think Devin Booker could be a star in this league. I don't know if that's controversial to say or not. I do think he's got the shooting touch. If you put him on the right team, he could obviously... I wouldn't say he'd be like a Clay Thompson in terms of his defense, but in terms of offense and scoring wide-open jumpers, I think he would be a perfect fit for whatever team needs like a second fiddle. I mean, whether or not he wants to be the second fiddle is up to is up to debate and, and his personality that we haven't seen yet because, you know, a lot of Phoenix Suns games haven't been shown on TV. But I would think he'd be a perfect number two guy or number three guy in, like, a super team. So we'll just have to see where it goes from there. But let's just jump into what I was going to talk about in this main video, and that was the struggling Lonzo Ball. Uh, Lonzo Ball right now, as you know, they played a couple games. Of course, the first game against the Clippers I watched struggled against the Clippers. Uh, Patrick Beverly was in his face, making sure that he wasn't going to uh, dominate or anything like that. And I'll just read you his stat lines really quick about all three games. So the first game, he had 8 points, 3 of 13 shooting. The next game, he had 29 points, 12 of 27 shooting. And then the next game, for the... Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong stats, I believe. No, 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 I'm reading the right stats. Yeah, so... 
The first game he had, he had three points. Second game, he had 29. And the third game against the Pelicans, he had eight points on three of 13. And as you can see here, his assists were high up except for the first game. The first game was a little bit slow. But against the Suns, he had nine assists. Against the Pelicans, he had 13. So, of course, he's becoming more confident in his playing ability in terms of passing and making sure that, you know, these are world-class athletes that play in the NBA. There's no longer these college kids. You know, some of them are really great athletes, but they're not the athletes of an NBA caliber. So you're going to have to make sure that you're even more crisp, even more uh, hard on your fouls because they will it will definitely cost you if you're not very good at it. And we see here that he's also being a pretty good rebounder. He has eight rebounds uh, the last game that he played, 11 the, against the Suns where he almost had a triple-double, and then he had nine against the Clippers. So he obviously will make an impact in the rebounding category just because he's 6'7", 6'6", six, six, whatever height that they list him at with or without shoes. He's very tall, so obviously he's going to get the boards. Uh, he's one of those re- uh, point guards that will get the boards, and then they'll start the fast break, which I like. I like to see that in a point guard. But is this is this a cause for concern for Laker fans, for Lonzo Ball fans? No, absolutely not. Although he's struggling right now, especially in the first game, everyone thought his career was over. They thought, oh, he's trash. He's not any good. Guys, this is a 19-year-old going into the NBA for the first time. He may not like his father, like me. I don't like his dad. But you have to respect that Lonzo is actually a really good player, and he actually delivers dimes almost like Jason Kidd. And that's what I like about Lonzo Ball is that his dimes are very good. They're very well planned out, methodical. He's a very good player. I'm not going to say anything about uh, his jump shot because, you know, I feel like you can have any jump shot now in the NBA. Of course, you know, back in the day, you always had to have like the fundamental jump shot. But these days, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's an issue for Lonzo because he gets that open space he needs to take the jumper. So I'm not having any issues with that. Maybe he needs to take better uh, looking, not better looking, but better opportunity shots where he, when he gets in scoring position, he's able to just take it to the rim. But like I said, guys, he will be all right. This is just the first week. I mean, it's not even the first week. I believe tomorrow and Tuesday will be the first official like whole week that we've seen of NBA play. But we just have to wait until then, guys. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to harp on Lonzo just because of the the, Lon- the big baller brand stuff with his dad, LeVar, uh, the, the keeping up with the, the ball family is what I'm going to call it. Because I think the same producers also do the keeping up with the Kardashians. Basically, it's all just a stunt. It kind of sucks that I wish Lon... I mean, the thing is, with Lonzo's demeanor, he doesn't give off the fact that he's a very cocky, arrogant type of player. He's a very chilled, laid-back player. Whether that's a detriment or a help is up to the person to debate. I mean, I think it's kind of a help because he's not like his dad. If he was like his dad, I think he would have even more heat. Going with wrestling terms, he'd have more heat on him. But I don't think it's anything to worry, guys. I think he'll be all right. You may not like his dad, but I still respect Lonzo Ball's play. I think he'll be all right during the season. Once he gets into it, the first month, even the second month after that, we'll we'll have to judge him based on that. But I think he's going to be okay, guys. You know, he'll be, I don't think he's not going to be a scoring threat. And I think that's what people need to get in their heads because I think only like the casual fans and the fans that just watch the NBA that don't understand everything, they'll just look at his scoring points and they'll just be like, oh, wow, uh, he didn't really have that many points. But you got to understand. He is a point guard. Traditionally, a point guard or his style of play is to get other people involved and get other people going rather than himself, which is the type of player I like to play, You know, whether it's YMCA pickup or if it's like a professional basketball league or college. I like my guys to get the other people involved, and it'll get... Once you get other people involved and keep the ball rolling, then you can start seeing him score some points. But there's nothing to be concerned with about Lonzo. I think he'll be just fine. Whether or not his father will, you know excuse his play is like I don't want to hear from him I want Lonzo to do the talking now it's time for Lonzo to tell his dad hey look I got this uh you got you got the other boys at home you got uh Leangelo and Lamelo. you got them to worry about let me worry about me and let me do me when I talk to the media and press you don't need to talk to them let me do my thing you can talk about those guys but you can't talk about me because I need to do my thing so I think Alonzo will be fine. I think, you know, it's just a little bit of a rough patch right now. Learn understanding the NBA game. It's a lot different than college. You play a lot more games. But, you know, it's we just have to see and find out whether or not he will be able to. But in my opinion, I think he'll be just fine. And let's just quickly, after we just talked about the Alonzo thing, I just wanted to quickly go over the top 10 for the 
power rankings for ESPN. So at number one, they have the Houston Rockets, which of course beat the the Golden State Warriors in the first game just by the escape of Kevin Durant not releasing the shot on time. But they're going to be without Chris Paul for another two or four weeks, which will really be a huge blow to them. Although, like I said in the review in the first episode of the Charge, I don't think he's going to. Ma- I don't think he did very well, and I don't think he's going to mesh with this team. He's still a good player, and he's still a good defensive player, getting those steals and also getting those assists, which is a number that we always often overlook. And I kind of overlooked that in the first game talking about the Charge, but he's going to be missed, and I think we're going to have to see other guys step up. I think they will be able to step up, but. We'll see how it goes. The number two team, which is a very big surprise to me, and that is the San Antonio Spurs. But of course, if you watch them play, they don't they didn't miss a beat. Uh, Greg Popovich showed you why he is the one of the best coaches in the NBA. Gets this team hyped up. I believe they beat the Timberwolves. So, you know, a Timberwolves team that I was very hyped for and excited for, they just silenced them. You know, Kawhi Leonard's still a goat. Mono Ginobili, I think I exaggerated how many points he scored in one of our uh, basketball talk reviews, but in the gimmick cast but like I said they'll be a great team LaMarcus Aldridge is doing very well I don't think I'll have any issues with the Spurs getting in there and number three is going to be the Golden State Warriors they're having a little bit of a debacle right now a little bit of a slow transition they're one and two we just saw a couple nights ago that Steph Curry and Kevin Durant got ejected from a game because Steph Curry threw a very disgusting mouthpiece at a ref I, I don't know what it is about Steph Curry and the mouthpiece. He needs to either just keep that in his mouth or just not use it at all because it's kind of disgusting when you just throw it. At least in my opinion. I mean, it, it's sanitary reasons, man. I mean, you, you can't just throw it out there, man. And whether you intentionally aimed it at the ref or not is up for debate, and whether fans want to believe him or not, that's on them. But I just need you to, like, I just need you to not throw it. You can you can say, you know, what the hell was that or what the ref i mean i don't mind that i don't mind if you say that kind of shit to the ref because obviously sometimes the ref you get a little bit po'd because they're not giving you the calls and i understand that it's it's basketball it's sports it happens sometimes where you don't get the call on a night or a week i mean it's it's basketball it's sports it happens but you have to be a little bit more uh mature not to throw shit because it just makes you look dumb and also with the kevin durant thing that shit is corny man flipping off the referee i'd rather you just go to the up to the referee and just bad mouth him and say hey i think you made a really shitty ass call why are you uh kicking out my teammate i'd rather have that than just flipping the bird at the ref i think flipping the bird is just a very cheesy and corny way to get at the ref or at a player or at a fan if you want to say something i would say it to your face like i'm gonna say hey you better stop talking shit to me or hey you better shut the because i don't want to hear this at all from you you know i'd rather have that than just you know flipping the bird because it's just very childish very corny I, I mean if i'm in the heat of the moment i understand it but if i'm in the heat of the moment i'm saying what i said like shut the <laughs> ref or ref you're <laughs> out of your mind while you're making these calls i would say it right to his face i wouldn't be in a place where i would just be like okay yeah ref whatever <laughs> like flip him off i mean no that's just not what's going to happen but i mean it is what it is the golden state Warriors will be just fine you know they're just going through their they're, they're still drinking a little bit more of the champagne from the championship season the previous season. And it's going to be a fun season because these teams are a little bit struggling right now. And at number four, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that went 2-0 and at the beginning of the season. They beat the the Celtics. Yeah, they beat the Celtics. They also beat the Giannis Bucks, who are looking very good. I will say, Giannis, you are looking like a beast, dude. I'm glad that you're beasting and feasting like Kobe told you to and knew you would. So, you know, salute, salute to Giannis. He's such a beast. But anyway, going back to the Cavs, you know, they lost against the Magic. It was a very bizarre loss. It was very weird, but uh, LeBron is still doing very well. LeBron will be all right. He's always going to do everything. And, you know, what else can you say about the Cavaliers other than they look like a well-oiled machine? Even after the Gordon Hayward loss, they still look pretty good. The only thing that I'm going to question them about is just the defensive lapses that lead them back to these 20-point games where the players, where teams come back. But... You know, the Cavs will always be good. They'll always find a way to win, and that's just the way it's been for them. The next team is number five, the Washington Wizards, who, you know, coming after some of the games I've watched, John Wall and Bradley Beal, they're looking really good right now. John Wall especially, he's looking like a man on a mission. He wants that MVP award, it looks like. He really wants to be the top player in the NBA, and I'm glad that he does because, you know, sometimes with uh, with play, it's just very hard to see that, 
you know, you see some guys beasting and feasting, but, you know, John Wall is out there on a mission. His jump shot is a little bit suspect, and it always has been, but he's going to work on it, and I think that he'll be just as good when he comes into uh, playing well into the season and going to probably be an all-star for sure. No question about it. The next team, number six, is the Toronto Raptors, 2-0. and They were previously ranked at 10 from the ESPN rankings, and it was kind of crazy. You know, the Raptors are looking pretty good. I don't really have anything to say because I haven't really watched their games as much. It's one of those teams where I haven't really watched, but I know DeMar DeRozan is still beasting and feasting. I know Drake is still the owner of the team. He'll he'll do what he wants on the court. It just depends on the other guys. I need the other guys to step up and get involved in the game, making sure that they're going to do very well. I'm hoping that's the case because I think the Raptors in Canada probably deserve a title at some point. Whether it's this team or not is up for debate, and I don't think so. But we'll just have to see from here. You know, they're ranked number six on ESPN, and that's pretty much all I got to say on them. The next team is the Oklahoma City Thunder, otherwise known as the All Star team with Carmelo, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. They're one and two right now. They lost against the Jazz. I saw that game. They had a chance to win it because they came back with the star power, but. The Jazz somehow playing very great defense, and, you know, they're still a good team. I mean, there's no question about it. You know, they're still struggling a little bit. I know they struggled against that game, and also kind of sucked because I believe Carmelo hit a three in the game where he played against the uh, Timberwolves. He hit a very good three. They could easily be 2-1 and one right now, but obviously they're 1-2. and two. Uh, Wiggins hit a last second buzzer beater shot to neglect or negate the Carmelo three pointer, which man, Carmelo has such a silky jumper, man. I wish he would, I mean, ah, he's so good, but you know, they're one and two looks like Westbrook is doing all right. I mean, he didn't really have a good game that last game. They'll still be okay. I think they'll be able to make it to the semifinals or even the conference finals if they're going to mesh well and play well together they'll obviously get there it all depends on everything that happens later but let's move on to number eight and like i said i saluted him earlier it's going to be the milwaukee bucks and giannis giannis is not joking around right now i believe uh giannis right now is averaging 38.3 points a game obviously he's only played three games but you know he's looking like he's ready to kill uh i saw that last second block he had against the timber or not timberwolves but the portland trailblazers when they were playing this dude is so long, and it only takes him, like, one dribble to get to the rim from half court. It's ridiculous, man. This dude is so long, so athletic. I won't say that he'll be, like, the next uh, superstar in terms of, like, a LeBron-esque type of player. He still has a long way to go. He's still a young player, but he will definitely be really good in a couple of years if he gets a reliable jumper, which is very inconsistent. It's here and there, but he's working on it, especially, like, a three-point jumper. He's working on it. It's getting better, but... Giannis is really not kidding around when Kobe said uh, to win the MVP, and he's showing that he is going to be one of the front runners of it, and he'll at least be in the top five, I think, by the end of the season. He's just that damn good, and I can't wait to see him beast and feast and hold up the MVP trophy in this new NBA award system. I don't really like that idea, but it is what it is for that. You know, salute to Giannis because he's a beast. Number nine is the LA Clippers. They're 2 0 right now. They beat the Lakers, the struggling Lakers. And I'll just say this, the offense looks a little bit unorganized without Chris Paul there. I know Blake Griffin is looking a little bit better. He's looking like he's going to be handling the ball a lot more, driving into the paint more than usual. But I still think that Blake Griffin and just this team in general is not good enough to be a decent team. You know, obviously we questioned them when we questioned whether or not they were going to be anything uh, special. You know, they have a 30-year-old rookie who's not playing too bad, but I think he has a plantar fasciitis. He has another foot injury. Uh, So he's going to be out indefinitely. We don't know when he's going to come back, but we'll see how it goes on from here. I mean, I don't know if Austin Rivers is going to be inserted into the lineup just because his dad's there. Austin Rivers, to me, not very good. You know, I was hyped about him when he was in college and high school, but he's just showing me that he's just going to be another average NBA player. Nothing too special there, but... This Clipper team, they're ranked number 9, and they're 2-0, and so you can't really say anything bad about them. And number 10 is the Minnesota Timberwolves, the team I was really hyped about. They're 2-1 and one right now. They're doing all right. You know, in close games, they're 2-0. and uh, They're very good. You know, Andrew Wiggins hit the buzzer beater, of course. Carl Anthony Towns is still looking like a beast and a monster. Posterizing, I believe. I can't remember who they were playing, but I remember he posterized a team. 
I want to say it's the Pistons, but that's probably dead wrong. But anyway, the Minnesota Timberwolves are your number 10 team. They're looking pretty good. And I think that, to be honest, I think that they're going to be, they should be ranked ahead of the Clippers. I think the Clippers are just 2 0 against really bad teams, not really good teams. I be, who the Clippers play? Yeah, they just played the. Okay, they played the Suns. So, yeah, they didn't play very good teams. They played against the 0-3 Suns. They played against a, a very young Laker team that's not very good right now. So, you know, Clippers at number 9 I think is a little bit of a stretch. I think the Timberwolves should be ranked ahead of them. They also should be – I think they should be ranked at least 8. But that's either here nor there. That's the only one I disagree with. Obviously, the Rockets are going to be up top because they're 3-0. and The San Antonio Spurs are going to be up because they are – a well-oiled machine and they will always will be under greg popovich so no complaints there warriors cleveland very good they're they're in the correct positions the wizards are okay in their position the ten, the raptors are good i don't think the oklahoma city thunder should be at seven i think this should be below i think the milwaukee bucks should be at least seven or six you know you can flip-flop toronto and milwaukee but that's going to be it, guys. I mean, other than that, you know, you got the... Well, I'll just round up the top 15. I won't say anything about them. So you got the Jazz, the Trailblazers, the Nuggets, uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Celtics, of course. One and two. Kyrie Irving being very inefficient right now, shooting 36% from the field uh, when Gordon Hayward's out. So, you know, obviously it's going to be a tough break for him, but I think he can pull through. This team should be good enough to at least get top four in the East. But other than that, guys, this has been your charge. This has been all the news and rumors so far that have been majorly pushed through the NBA news and rumors circuit. You know, you got the Eric Bledsoe thing. You got the Lonzo Ball inconsistency. And, of course, you have the wonderful power rankings, guys. Anyway, this has been your boy, Bernie. I'll haul at you guys later. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe all the videos here on Fusion Corp. Please remember to check out wrestling, which we will have tonight about Monday Night Raw. And, of course, we're going to have our Dragon Ball Super reviews. But anyway, guys, this has been your boy, Bernie. I'll haul at you later. Peace.